And our first guest this morning is Teresa Corbin. She grew up Catholic, but she's now a Muslim. Teresa converted just two months after September 11th. We welcome her to Memphis for Me Muslims in Memphis Month. That's March, and we will link to a website where you can get information about all of the events because the whole idea is bridging the gap. But first, let's tell your story. You were Catholic. Yes, ma'am. What made you convert? Um, you know, I was studying different cultures and different religions, and um, in college, my roommate actually converted to Islam. Mm -hmm. And when she converted, I realized all of a sudden that I had all these prejudices towards Muslims that I hadn't even known. Prejudice like um, what? Like, um, I thought that they were violent and angry and, you know, they oppressed women. You know, the, the typical misconceptions about Islam. Right. And what I came to find out, it was completely the opposite of all of that. And it really attracted me and it spoke to my nature. And so I just, you know, I just figured that if this is what I feel, then I should be Muslim too. What were the key points that attracted you about Islam? Um, just the connection with God. You know, you pray five times a day and reestablish that connection with your Creator. And, you know, just the modesty and the humility. And it was a lot of different things, I think. And um, really learning about Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was just reminded me so much of what I learned about Jesus. And you know his patience and tolerance towards all people, mm -hmm. and it was just amazing. Teresa, when you also converted, uh, was there much resistance, pushback from other family members, other friends, or how did they react to your decision? Well, it was kind of mixed. You know, they were concerned, of course, because it was a it was a hard time for Muslims at the time. Mm -hmm, so right. you know, they were worried for my safety, and I appreciated that. But mostly, they were really supportive. Like, if this is what you want to do then we'll support you. So they were really good. And they took steps to educate themselves. Absolutely. So they understood it yes. more fully. My younger sister, Eileen, she actually took a course in college about Islam so yeah. she could learn more about Does it religion. make you angry, groups like ISIS and people who use, who, who call themselves Muslims, and I, I suppose technically are, but do not follow the, the truly peaceful tenets of the faith, does that make you angry? Because so many Americans do have a very negative opinion yes, of Muslims. Yes, it, I can't tell you how frustrating it is, and that is what the world sees about Islam. Mm. And it's a complete distortion, and it makes something that I find so beautiful in my life, it makes it so corrupt to other people. And it's just very, very frustrating and, and makes me very angry, and I wish that, you know, and it's a good thing they're having me here tonight so I can have that platform to tell people this is not Islam at all by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. Maybe these people are Muslim, I can't say that, mm -hmm. but what they do is completely divorced from Islam. Are you seeing any positive steps or more positive steps for communities, people of different religions to try slowly but surely to better get to know one another? Absolutely. I'm seeing really good things. Well, where I'm from in New Orleans, there's a lot of interfaith um, committees, and we get together and talk about what we can do to help the youth become more faithful and, and uh, how we can live together in peace and understand each other. So, and definitely here in Memphis, I'm really impressed with the Muslims in Memphis organization uh, and how they're having such an outreach to the community. Mm -hmm. I believe last week they did the Stop Hunger now drive right. and, mm -hmm. right. and we're very successful in that and got a bunch of people of different faiths together to uh, you know collaborate on this effort right to bridge that gap to bridge the gap there's a big gap and it needs to be bridged definitely. so tonight you are speaking and we'll put this on the on the screen for you you're speaking in Germantown right. will it also be will it just be a talk you telling your story or will you take questions because I think people have a lot of right, questions right. and maybe they're even afraid to ask mm -hmm. for fear of looking Right. prejudiced but right. will you take questions yeah, yeah, because again a, a lot of people want a conversation yes and they right, want to right. get to know one another and understand what's going on Absolutely. so what we're will gonna, happen we're gonna have questions at the end I believe there's gonna be about 30 minutes for questions um, I won't really necessarily be telling about my story because mm -hmm. I do have a blog where I have all of that I'll be inviting people to understand what Islam is who the Muslims are and where the misconceptions lie so I'm going to really be focusing on that and afterwards people if they have a questions about me and my journey or anything really mm -hmm. they don't need to feel shy or embarrassed or feel like we'll judge them or you know be harsh towards them. It, it, we're open to everything. You also mm -hmm. mentioned that you, you are a feminist I, I'm just yes. reading on you and yes. did, what did you find with regard to how women are regarded? Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, my first interaction with a Muslim woman, I asked her, why do you have to wear this, you know, the hijab or scarf, mm -hmm. you right. call it. So many rules. Right. And, you know, she told me so beautifully, it's her choice to please God. And it's not that she's hiding from the world, but she's dressing this way so she can be recognized mm -hmm. as a believing woman. Like we would recognize a picture of Mary. She is a faithful woman. Mm -hmm. Peace and blessings be upon her. Like we would recognize a nun. So this is not like we're not hiding from the world. We're trying to represent ourselves as believing women. Do you feel you also have just as many rights as any other woman in any other religion? I do, absolutely. I feel like, you know, there's not only so many marriage rights and a lot of people have problems with that because they see what goes on in politics in the Middle East that is contrary to Islam. You know, the woman has the right to say who she marries, mm -hmm. who she doesn't marry, if she marries, if she divorces, when she wants to divorce, all these rights, you know, and it's not just, um, a right to education. It is an obligation on every Muslim. So whatever they're doing that's contrary to this gotcha. is completely against Islam. So the Taliban, they're not really practicing. Mm. So we just have to help get that word out and right. that's exactly Absolutely. what the Muslims in Memphis group is doing yeah. all this month and again we will link to that website so yeah. you can get the many events. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, Teresa, we appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. It's Thank been great. So Thank much. you for the time.